Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be learning something new. So in the previous video, we made a get request to this URL, http, http bin.org slash get. We made a get request to this URL. In today's video, we'll be doing the same, but instead of using blocking uh, URL requests like we did last time, in this video, we'll be using async await. So many of you are probably from JavaScript background. Uh, I mean, uh, statistics say that Rust is not going to be some anybody's first programming language, right? People would already be coming from a JavaScript and Colang background. So I'm assuming that you probably already know JavaScript really well. And uh, the async await concept here is very similar to what you would have learned in JavaScript. So uh, you wouldn't want to make blocking requests which keep blocking the entire process. So you use async and await. And uh, in this video, exactly that's what we'll be learning about. We'll be learning about async await. And that's like going to be the most important uh, the, the the primary way of how you'll be calling APIs in Rust. So whatever you'll do in your Rust career in the future, like working with blockchains like Solana and uh, Polkadot, uh, all, all of those projects that you'll build in the future, you'll be calling APIs using async await mostly. So it's going to be a very important uh, concept for your career. Now, uh, I had received a lot of uh, requests in my Golang 40 Golang project playlist videos that uh, even the projects in the beginning of the playlist were quite complex. So I've incorporated those changes here in this 50 uh, Rust project playlist uh, series. So in case you're not aware, uh, in case you're not aware, this uh, uh, video is part of the 50 Rust projects playlist series. Uh, in, if you want to check out the other ones, go check out the other ones as well. Uh, in the playlist tab, check out the other videos. So in this uh, video, we're going to keep things simple in the sense that even the first 20 videos, right, I'm going to keep things simple. What I'll be doing is I'll be taking some concepts, uh, the basic concepts of Rust and building a small project around them rather than building videos which have multiple uh, concepts being implemented at the same time, which can confuse some people. So I'm using simple concepts and building simple projects around them for the first 20 videos. And from 20 videos onward, 21st video onward, we'll be building more complex uh, projects, which will have multiple concepts being brought together to build bigger projects, all right? So so what was basically happening was that there, there wasn't enough uh, starter material available for Rust and Golang, and certainly people would land on my videos and they would like really lose it because the, the stuff was really advanced. So I'm trying to bridge that gap now where you know anybody can build the first 20 projects, uh, not a big challenge, and then 21 onwards, the people who already know Rust, they'll enjoy more. Uh, from the 21st video onwards, okay? So having said a lot now, till now, and not shown you any code, uh, that's making me a little uncomfortable. So what we'll do now is we'll CD out of it, we'll clear, and then we will create a new directory. Uh, sorry, a new cargo project, cargo new. It's going to be called async rust yt for YouTube, and we'll CD into it. So we'll say CD async rust yt, and I will open this up in my code editor. So now hopefully you can see the VS code on my screen. Uh, for the dependencies, we need request. Okay, so uh, I, I hope when you open up this file after doing cargo new, you would get the SRC folder and you'll get cargo.toml. And that's where we're making some changes. We're adding dependencies in, in form of crates and request is the first crate that we need. Uh, we need a particular version of request and we need some features from that version. So I'll go ahead and add them here. In case you don't want to type all of this and you want to pick it up from my GitHub project completely, all right. I'll try and leave a link uh, to the GitHub project in the, in, the, in, the, in the description. But in case I forget to do that, because usually these videos, they get edited and then they come out after a while. So in case I forget to do that, please uh, go check out my GitHub uh, account. There's something in my eye, really sorry if, if I keep blinking a lot. I was, I was riding my bike. Uh, and then there's something in my eye. So uh, apologies if, if it distracts you. Anyhow, so I, I need two more uh, dependencies. I need error chains and I need Tokyo. So what I'll do is I'll copy and paste those as well. Now, I believe I have, we've already, in, in, the, in one of the projects we've built earlier, we've used almost all three of them. Tokyo will help us to make async await requests. Error chain is for uh, chaining errors and helping us handling errors better. Request, as we all know, we've already used it before. Uh, now, main rs, okay, main rs is the file where we'll be writing uh, most of our code, or actually all of our code, and here we'll start, we'll get started with the first line, which is basically use 
header underscore chain and error underscore chain and for error chain you'll see foreign links and get the standard IO error packages you'd use those and the HTTP request Errors request and error. So you'll be able to handle the standard errors also and the errors pertaining to request, which basically uh, deal with making HTTP requests. So you'll be able to handle both. And now is the part where we'll be making our async await request. So we'll say Tokyo main. And the syntax is very similar to what you would use in JavaScript. It's async await, basically async, and the name of the function. So whenever you want to make uh, an, uh, an asynchronous request, you will always write async in front of the name of the function. So right till now, everything else was just uh, boilerplate code. Right now is where we're writing the actual function, which uh, I want to show you, which I want you to focus on, which is writing async in front of the func main or whatever the name of the function result and um, the second most important thing is uh, the await part right since we've written the sync part we have to write the await part so here we'll say let response equal to request so we're making using request only to make that request so we'll say get again making a get request right and the URL is the same again this time, which is HTTP bin slash get. Okay, uh, but now comes the most important part, which is at the end you're saying dot await. Okay, so that was it. That this is actually uh, till now the the main the most important stuff that I want to show you. I think and await making a request a get request to that URL. Okay. And now you just want to print out stuff. So you'll say print ln status response dot status. By the way, either today or tomorrow, I'm also planning to create a video on um, on substrate and polka dot on how to build a small project using substrate now it is going to be really complex for somebody who is very new to rust so uh, you know I, I only suggest you watch it uh, i mean i would recommend you to watch it but watch it with an open mind in the sense uh, it, it'll be it's possible you won't understand many things but just watch it with an open mind because uh, eventually you will get there where you'll be able to understand all of that as well so we'll be building a small substrate like i'll just take you through substrate basically that's my plan either today or tomorrow because a lot of people who are learning rust they also want to know exactly where will they use these skills right and that's also what i want to show you guys so here to show the body right we'll say response.text and then again await for the body and this body is what we'll print out. So when you saw the demo, right, you saw headers and status and body. So this is for the body. Now for printing out the body, we'll say print ln. And here we'll say body. Comma body. At the end, you'll just say, okay. So this was it guys, this was our entire program and what I will do now is I'll try to save it and I'll try and run it and let's see what happens. So we may get an error and that's completely okay because we will fix those errors then. So you say cargo new, cargo run, sorry. And then you'll wait for a while. Uh, I think you can't see my terminal where I'm building this project. So let me try to show you my terminal just a second. Uh, I'm using OBS to stream all of this, so sometimes there is a small lag. Um, hopefully, yeah, now you can see my, uh, but my face is hidden now, so I'll just bring my face up front. Yeah, so it's building, it's taking a while to build, so I'll take a minute's break till it builds. 
All right, so since my internet connection is really slow, it took a long time to build the project, but as we can see, there are no issues and everything works perfectly fine. So that's amazing, that's great, that's what we wanted. Now, these are really small projects, right? Small projects or programs, whatever you wanna call it, the, the first few ones at least, but they make you feel really confident. So you've learned a new concept with Rust, you've, you've learned how to implement it, how to use it, and now you can Take off a box saying that you've done like six, seven Rust projects and you're on the way, right? This is what uh, builds your confidence. This is what builds your ability to be able to tackle bigger projects, right? Uh, since you've seen all these concepts in isolation now and using these individual building blocks, we'll be able to then uh, bring them all together and build bigger projects. So I hope you're understanding where we're going with this. And in the next video, we will be doing a, a similar kind of a thing that we did today but it'll be a different take on it so i'll see you in the next video and i and thanks for watching i hope you've subscribed already i'll see you in the next video